Hello everyone and welcome to this new YouTube video where I'm going to be showing you and sharing how I work but most specifically how I tend to create um, three bases when it comes to concept art. I didn't really use these pretty often in my first years of experience but felt like it was a tool that really allow me at least to be faster more efficient and to tackle bigger pieces and not be afraid about a huge layout and stuff um so a lot of artists in in the industry are using blender um i'm not because first of all i've never really took the time to learn blender if i'm honest and but i knew unreal since my game art studies and felt like it's pretty powerful to know Unreal, at least a tiny bit, even the basis. Because if you're involved in a game production and your team is working in an engine like Unreal, for example, I mean specifically Unreal, you'll be able to communicate more um, efficiently with them or at least be more comfortable. So pretty much how it's working is Unreal is giving us access to a different, to different options. So we can go into games filming videos to be honest I don't really know every aspect of every project so I'm gonna be focused into the games first briefly talk about the first person and the third person and the, the rest is as you can see and pretty much know if you want to do like for example a, a personal piece and it's a an FPS type of game uh, you can go into the first person that will allow you to have all the parameters of the first person available to you so you'll be able to take a screenshot from in-game context which is very powerful in a portfolio by the way same for the third person the top down and the rest but for the sake of the video as it's just like an introduction to that software you can always play with it later let's go let's go into the blank and create a, a new project into uh, a, a very empty space where nothing is is you will have nothing in it pretty much just a, a, a basic scene let's say on the bottom right i can just give it a name of that project let's say like it's a youtube test uh a for example on the bottom left i can choose the folder where i want my project to be located i don't really care about this to be honest so i'm, I'm just gonna click on create so once you open unreal for the first time pretty much this is this is it this is what it's looking like uh, you have uh, different options of nature character and a lot of different stuff you can put some lighting in it um but i'm gonna keep it simple for the sake of the, the tutorial um so what's important is that you have the viewport on the uh, on the middle <laughs> pretty much know what it is um the outliner is a good thing where it's it's pretty much the library of every object you have and you'll see but what's gonna be very important for us is this this little menu that is currently engaged into this selection mode but what's interesting for us is the modeling one let's just create a box by starting so I pretty much click on a uh, box left click on the mouse to uh, put it in the scene currently I feel like it's too small so I can increase the dimensions of my box let's put like maximum everywhere um later let's say i want to bend that thing i want to deform it so i'm going to add just subdivision so pretty much resolution i don't know like 20 everywhere or something um and pretty much like this is it for my cube i can click accept to validate my choices um and here's my thing so once i have this i can so go away in the space uh, but I can start to also like quickly, I don't know, do some masses and blocking and stuff. Thinking about, hey, I want to do like a, a small structure of a house or something. Um, so I'm going to think about some stuff like this. Uh, so I can duplicate my stuff, maintaining alt and moving it. So it's creating another, another primitive. I can also change the shape of my cube. Um so for example those are instances that means that if i modify the shape of one cube it will have the modifications to the other ones so i don't want this so i'm just going to create another cube that has the same parameters as the first one we created and i can go into the deform section here 
in and like a warp thing so I can choose between like a bend a twist <laughs> could be fun I guess that's all except this is like looking like it's gonna be weird like uh, she need those kind of shit uh, I don't know let's just keep open things and, and play with those and, and you'll and you'll see what it's doing but yeah I can also um, move uh, vertices by hand uh, I can reduce like this, so pretty much select everything. You, you can play with things. Like. That's why I don't want it to. I can't cover everything, so yeah, just have fun, try things, and you'll see what it's doing. Um, I'm just showing the the, the most important stuff, I would say. Uh, but feel free to just come up with your own ideas and and, uh, and try things for sure. Um, let's create a cylinder because it's very cubic right now. Okay. Use the size of it, dimensions, resolution, and placing just object in space. And that's pretty much it. I'm, I'm kind of building like a Lego brick thing structure, um, and see and see what it's doing. I, I don't really know what I want to do. <laughs> to be honest, it's just for not very precise. Uh, but it's just pretty much how I'm building my scenes most of the time. I would have. Probably do some 2D research before uh, by hand and uh, open them on the side and try to try to just come up with something that is based on my research. Um, let's say for example, like that's a beautiful house or a structure, and I wanna I want a door somewhere around here, um, so I can pretty much create a hole in my volumes. Yeah, I'm gonna erase the volume in another one. So I can select the first one and the second one and I can go into, I think it's in model and click on boolean and there you have it, beautiful door, yay. And yeah, it's it's pretty much infinite, you, you can go, you can go even crazy, let's, let's try something very crazy, I mean crazy, not expected for structure, but you can, you know, pretty much do whatever you, you want and you can just still move the volume while you're doing the volume stuff and you can just I don't know click on accept yeah that's uh, strange but just showing how it's working basically um, also I feel like the ground right now is pretty flat and I feel it could be interesting to have something more organic organic natural so I'm gonna go into uh, landscape instead of modeling mode um, so this tool allows us to have an impact on the landscape itself as it's called so I can play with some uh, mountains and volumes and stuff which which could be interesting if you're planning about doing something a bit more organic like in with trees and stuff um, you can smooth things a bit this is this is the landscape and try those things uh, I won't go into all of them but at least try them and give it a shot in, in, in fact, that's pretty much it. We can go into the outliner and looking for the direction of light, which is basically the sunlight. And I can sh change the orientation for, let's say, like it's in the middle of the day, almost, or it's close to uh, the end. If you're looking for nice and sharp uh, shadow shapes, you can try to find something that is looking good to you. I don't know. Something like this could be could be nice. Yeah, very simple and very graphical. <laughs> like that's that's nice. Also, something I forgot to mention is as it's a three D space, it could be very difficult for you to uh, know how big your stuff is. And so I like to create a small volume that represents the scale of a character, for example, in my scene. So I can adapt. Um, the scale of my uh, door or entrance or windows or so I know that everything makes sense in my space and and that's pretty much it for how to build the blockings now I'm gonna show you how, how I can just take a screenshot and think about um, for example use some photographic knowledge very quickly with playing the folk with the focal lens and the place of the 
the placement of my camera in my scene for example so what is pretty cool with unreal uh, is when you go into window and you go into viewport you can open a second one which is pretty much uh, just another canvas so you have vision about everything you've done um, so once I'm when I'm moving something on the right it's also moving it into the left but I'm not using it for uh, that tape I want I'm gonna create a camera in my scene to take the, the the screenshot I want let's say like something like this is okay I'm gonna go into this top section and place a camera here and select the second one so I have the second one on the bottom right but I want it into the whole canvas so what I'm doing is also going into my camera in this viewport so going into perspective and select my placed cameras and I only have one in that scene so I know this one is the correct one but I can also give it a name test um, zero 01 and there there I have my camera I'm reopening the the second viewport and now I'm in my camera so when I'm moving into the space of the viewport too you can see here in the first viewport the camera in space so I can move it by hand right here or I can also like move it with the viewport and I'm moving the camera on the right which is uh, which is cool I can also play with the focal lens a bit let's say I'm a spectator of the scene I'm gonna take a step back with my camera so my camera is very far in space so you can think about a photographer in your scene like am I a spectator so I'm gonna be far from the subject or am I an actor let's say I'm an actor I'm gonna come very close to my subject so I can also reduce the focal length so it's gonna create something very dynamic but I'm gonna be mostly in the scene so play with those settings and yeah try 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 to come up with something that you like so now how do I take a screenshot of that scene so I can always use the windows options but to have a very clean workflow with unreal I'm just gonna go into that same section that we know for, uh, for creating cameras I'm not just gonna click into high resolution screenshot and it's opening like just a small canvas a small window uh, this is this the ratio size of your screenshot so it's gonna say one ratio of your screen so if you want a really um, high definition screenshot you can multiply it by by two or three or whatever and you can click on capture and that will create a screenshot and you will be able to use this one and open it in Photoshop and start drawing on top of it so we are now in Photoshop with our screenshot and we can now just start to have fun I mean blockings are fun but it depends uh, how complex those are for sure um, but yeah usually what I'm doing is I'm creating a white layer on top reducing the opacity of that layer and on top of this layer creating another one with um, my line work so I don't know it's just you know nothing super crazy about it uh, I'm trying things see see what's working based also on my research I don't like doing directly the concept uh, without any explorations before um, but um, I feel like it's helping me most of the time when I really want to have something well I'm not feeling too much blocked by my base which is important also by the way if you're doing some 3d bases like this you, you'll be tempted to really follow every lines like this and it's gonna feel very cubish and it might miss something depending on what you want to create of course everything is contextual but um, like as you see on the rooftop I'm not taking care too much about what's happening I can I'm just following my main guidelines but I'm playing with some curvy shapes for the rooftops and stuff even though I haven't done those in 3d directly I feel like it's yeah it's it's a way also to break the very geometric aspect of your concept so pretty much this is how I do my stuff and just playing and having fun with it 
And there it is, guys. I think uh, this catch took me about 15 to 20 minutes to finish, so it's super rough, but it gives you an idea of what you can do with that technique. I hope it was useful for you. If it was, please let me know. I'm also showing here some other examples of work where I use the exact same technique. Uh, please also let me know if this new format uh, was a uh, call to you, like with commentaries and explanations. Even though this one was focused about the tools and not about the ways of how do I think when I design something like a prop or an environment. Um, also, something I would love to hear from you is if you do or did some kind of work based on that workflow thanks to this video i would love to see it i'm gonna put my instagram into the description and don't hesitate to send me a few jpegs a few examples of your work that you did based on this um and yeah again if you have any questions about the workflow in real i would love to answer uh as much as i can because i'm not a special uh not specialized into unreal but yeah and i'll just say goodbye and thanks for coming cheers guys